I am a runner. Long runs, short runs, trail runs, road runs, marathons. I'd regard myself as above average. But just two years ago, I was more busy concentrating on not letting the thought of cake enter my head and doing the occasional very slow park run. I'd have called myself a beginner. Anybody watching would have agreed. But one of the cool things about having made a fast transition from then to now is that I can remember vividly the mistakes I made back then because it wasn't long ago. The one I'm talking about today is this. Water, H2O, sexy tap juice. Call it what you like, you could probably put it down. When I did those early park runs, I carried water, liters of water. I've done 50 kilometer ultra marathons since with less water. And I know I'm not alone because the best selling water bottle at my local sports shop is still that daft one with the hole in it to carry the thing. It's ridiculous. I had three of them. But this is not anti-water. I love water. I drink loads of water. The human body is mostly water. It's just that the average new runner probably doesn't need to be carrying as much water as they tend to, perhaps no water. If you're hydrating properly, which you certainly should be doing, it's that water already in your system. That's what will sustain you through a short run. It's not the couple of gulps you just took that's now sloshing around in your stomach from two minutes ago. And if you're thinking, this all sounds rubbish, I always carry three litres and a fast acting electrolyte mix because I do hill sprints in the Mojave Desert. Yeah, well done. You probably do need to carry some water then. You're also not new, you're not a beginner, you're not average, you're not normal, not very constructive. It's as useless information as something I saw recently on Facebook. Somebody had posted on a Facebook group for a local 10K, is there gonna be a water table at that race? Because they were worried with the coronavirus rules they wouldn't be allowing one. Somebody else had chipped in and said, don't need one. Elite athletes don't need to stop for water. You don't see Kipchoge stopping for water all the time on a marathon. No, you don't. Probably wasn't Kipchoge asking the question on a Facebook group for the Slough 10K or whatever it was. So back to beginners, hydrate properly. If you're not sure how, Google it. Have a bottle on your desk at work, have a bottle in the car, carry a bottle with you all the time. Before you go running, hydrate in advance. That is how to sustain yourself for a short period of exercise like a park run. But there is a problem with this useful information. You are going to ignore it. Because I did. I read loads of information at the time that said I could be running up to five, maybe even 10K, maybe even longer without the need of carrying water if I hydrated properly in advance. And I didn't buy it. I would tell myself, no, it's too hot out. Then it would be cold, so I'd have too many layers on, so I'd be hot. Then I'd tell myself that I was bigger than most people, so I didn't get rid of heat as efficiently as like an elephant without the surface area is. I had every excuse going. Here's what happened for me. Very slowly as I got better at running, I got more comfortable with trying new things. I would try running further, I would try running faster, and ultimately I tried running without water. One day I did a 10K race, I didn't take water, I grabbed a sip at the aid table halfway around and I hit a new personal best. Couldn't believe it. Probably because I wasn't lugging my own personal aquarium around with me. So that realization that you can run without water and the understanding of when you should run with water, both of those things just come over time as you get more confident. For example, today's run was 10K, 45 minutes dead pretty much. Typical October day in the UK, it was raining, so I didn't need any water. That pace, that speed without fluids two years ago, I would have regarded all of those aspects as completely impossible. Just, you might as well have asked me to hold my breath the entire time. Trust me, the beauty of running, you just keep doing it, it comes. All the things that you hold on to when you first start running, they're like a security blanket, the water, but also the phone, the gigantic earphones. You can't run without earphones. You learn to let those go as you get more confident. I was exactly the same. I couldn't run without music until I did a 10K race that didn't allow earphones, and I had to. And I suddenly realized it's completely fine. I don't have to have Slim Shady yelling in my ear for me to go for a jog. So given you are gonna carry water for at least some period of time in all likelihood, let's instead concentrate on how to carry it most efficiently because I have gone through every possible water carrying option there is. I have a pretty extensive selection of 
options still available to me. You know what, before we go through how I carry water now, let's just go over why not a bottle in the first place. Running is a whole body exercise. It involves your arms as much as it does your legs. You need to be using them in unison with your stride. What I found when I first started running with a water bottle is that annoyingly, this shoulder I had a problem with. I thought it was a rotator cuff issue, maybe medial deltoid, I wasn't quite sure, but it would ache. And it was annoying because I'm right handed and I wanted to carry the bottle in this hand, but it was so stiff I'd have to switch across to carrying the bottle in this hand, at which point my left shoulder started to ache. It's like that stupid joke when you say to the doctor, if I do this it hurts, if I do this it hurts, if I do this it hurts, what the heck is wrong with me? You've broken your finger. You could put him on letterman. So your arms need to be free to do what they're supposed to do when you're running. In fact, one of the benefits I found from not running without music was it allowed me to concentrate on my running form. When my hands coming up too high and my shoulders tense and stiff, was I staying nice and relaxed and loose? You can't do that if you're carrying literally a weight in your hand. If you think you can, get a water bottle, fill it up with water, and just spend half hour, sat down if you like, shaking, shaking your water bottle up and down, non-stop, for half an hour, and see if your arm aches. Two things will happen. One, your arm will ache. Two, if anyone sees you and you tell them you're exercising, they'll wonder what for. That's a bankable television set. So I started with a camelback. As over time I got better and more confident, I went from carrying a large one that held litres of water and just about every form of supply I could possibly need to a slightly smaller one, slightly smaller still, to my little tiny one that I use now. Holds easily half a litre of water, I can get my phone in it, it's absolutely perfect. Because this is not never carry water. If I'm out for over an hour or it's really hot or I'm going to be doing some really hard paced stuff, I will happily take water with me. I've even taken it on races. It's actually quite cool when you know that someone you just can't get past has to pull over to use the water table and you just jog on by, sipping on your straw. It's very satisfying. It also allows me to carry other stuff as well. If I'm going somewhere remote, I might want my phone with me, maybe my car keys, I might be carrying the GoPro, some energy bars, who knows. It's kept in there nicely. It's central on my back, so it's not affecting my running form. Big fan. And here's a tip. As you get better, you might find that you're filling up your water bladder less, especially if you start off with a gigantic one like this. If your bladder looks like this, with only a little bit of water in it, don't leave it like that, or it will slosh about all over the place and annoy the hell out of you. Tip it upside down, open the valve, and bleed the air out. Until there is water and nothing else, and then So camelbacks are cool. If you wear one, you'll look a bit different to most because most people don't use them, but don't worry about that. You'll just look over-equipped rather than inexperienced. That is a better look. In fact, if you've got kids, perfect. Get yourself one of those buggies that looks like the A-Team built it. Slap on some Oakleys, chuck some snacks in there for the kids and go parent. You'll look like a, a badass cross between a running Robocop and Mrs. Doubtfire. Or I wear a belt from today's run. Most of the time nowadays, if I'm running from the house and there's a reason why I might need to take water with me, for a hot day for example, I will use a belt. It is my preferred option. The downside is I've gone through about 18 of these different things to find one that didn't rub, felt comfortable, fitted properly. Having got there though, this is now my go-to device for when I'm out and about and I need to carry bits with me, whether it's water, stick the GoPro in it like I did today, my phone, my house keys, whatever it might be. Also, if I'm running shirtless, it doesn't mess up my tan lines like the Camelback does. And lastly, just because they were hanging on the door, 
If I'm out for hours or I need to take a lot of stuff with me, I use a running vest. I've got the Solomon ADV5 and 12. They are both brilliant bits of kit. They can stash as much as I want in them. I can grab hold of things when I'm running on the fly. Absolutely perfect. But they're probably a little bit hardcore for someone just jogging around the block. Having said that, if the choice is to run with one of these vests, or like most people do, carry one of these, Get this, stuff it with some granola, get yourself some vegan carrot cake in there and grow a beard. Tell people you've taken up ultramarathon running. Be better than most. That is it, hope you found it useful and interesting. Subscribe and like. I am now hungry. That's what happens when you say carrot cake.